So I've been busy the last uh, couple days. I got uh, seven green beans canned quart size. I've got uh, a dozen uh, pickles canned. And then I've got uh, six uh, chicken soup canned. And now I'm working on another dozen pickles. We've had so many cucumbers, it's incredible. So uh, we should have cucumbers, and I guess I'm going to make that part of my diet now. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right, when you're trying to do some homesteading, you got to try to figure out how to uh, make use of what you're getting. And I've just got this tremendous bumper crop of cucumbers. And I thought, well, I'll go ahead and uh, make some pickles. So I took a two-gallon container, and I've been following the recipe. This is about the third time I've done this. It's a uh, Morton has pickling and uh, canning and pickling salt. It has a recipe exactly what to do. And I thought, yeah, I'll go ahead and do two gallons. I didn't even really make a dent in my cucumbers. I can't even believe it. So I'm going to have to do this like three or four times. And we've been giving these things away. But I have, between these and the green beans, it is amazing. And so last night, I actually uh, processed a bunch of green beans. Uh, you know, I de-stringed them like in the previous video. And we ended up with seven quarts, which I was real happy because that's the uh, capacity of my pressure canner. And so this morning I, you know, boiled some water, put some salt into the uh, quart size jars and and then immediately got them in the canner. And it's only uh, 9.21 this morning. And so I've got uh, 21 minutes and then I'll have nine, I'm sorry, seven uh, quarts of green beans completed. And they just got to cool off. So I always keep a metal pan that I set them in in case you get a jar breakage. I've never had that happen, but better safe than sorry. And then I've also got my uh, pickle soaking, <coughs> cucumbers I should say. But the first step is you're supposed to soak them in uh, salt water, this pickling canning salt, uh, for uh, probably 12, 18 hours. And then uh, you go through the next step where you actually make up the pickling solution and go ahead and put them in the jars. And then you do, instead of pressure canning, you do this, uh, I guess you call it boiling canning. You don't put them under pressure. And it's because your pickles will turn to mulch. Mul mush. <laughs> Anyways, I did find a few cucumbers that were a little soft and uh, sometimes they're like too yellow and whatever. And so I just pitch them off the back porch to the chickens and they just have a blast with them. So now I'm sitting down and I'm trying to, uh, you know, go through the news and see what I can find for you. But uh, I just thought I'd like you to, you know, see what we do every day. This is kind of a, and I'll show you my pretty hairdo in the morning. I haven't got cleaned up yet. I've got a Kiwanis meeting I got to go to today. So I got to get, go get a haircut and get some nice clothes on and go meet with the guys. I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless. Hey everyone, I just wanted to let you know, uh, after doing a number of uh, pickle uh, canning, cucumber canning, making pickles, uh, using this recipe, I've now pretty much got it down. And, you know, a lot of what happens when you're doing this, if you don't get all your ingredients out, you're going to screw it up. So I think I finally have the recipe the way I like it, and uh, it's coming out very well. But I wanted to let you know, a lot of times these... Uh, Recipes don't give you the, all the information that you need. So I found if you double this recipe, it will make uh, a case of quart size mason jars. So 12 mason jars. And I use the large mouth, but the small mouth would work fine. I just find the large mouth are easier to work with. Um, the other thing was, don't buy these things from the store. If you're gonna do a bunch of uh, pickles, these are really expensive. These are about $4 a piece, and you're going to need two of these for each uh, 12 jars that you do. And not only that, you need uh, dill uh, seeds as well, or you got to go get the dill sprigs. So this last time around, I, nobody, I went to three different uh, uh, grocery stores, you know, Kroger, Publix, and uh, Inglis, and nobody's even carrying the uh, dill seeds and, that I could find. So I got fresh dill and that works fine too. Um, the other thing is for your pickling spice. Oh, let me go back. I forgot to say. 
So instead of uh, mustard seed and dill seed, you know, from the store like this, I went to Amazon and I got like uh, pound bags for maybe five bucks. So instead of this little bitty thing, three ounces, I got a pound for just a buck or two more. So now I've got, I'm going to be set for a long time. The only thing that, you know, obviously for being sustainable is vinegar. I don't really have any access to that anywhere, but uh, now I'll have everything that I need. The pickling spice is, uh, I ordered a, uh, you're supposed to put these in like a, uh, a little, uh, I forget what that stuff's called. Here, hold on, I got it over here. Cheesecloth. You're supposed to put it in a cheesecloth, you know, tied with a string so that it can seep like a tea bag. But I actually ordered uh, from Amazon these, uh, um, they're like little tea balls. And then that way I don't have to mess with the cheesecloth every time. I just dump the pickling spice into the little uh, tea balls. They're, they're, if you can imagine like a little stainless steel cup with a lid on it that's got a bunch of holes drilled all around it. It's got a little chain that hooks onto the side of the pot. Um, that works great too. So anyways, and the other thing was I kept forgetting to put the sugar in. And I also like to put uh, garlic. So I think two of the three batches had the garlic because I forgot to put that in. But uh, these are actually, everything's loaded in here except for the vinegar and water and uh, pickling salt and then the bag with the cheesecloth in here. So this is coming up to a boil right now. And then I'm just going to pour it over to pickles. And then, <coughs> oh boy, that vinegar is strong. And then what I'm going to do is uh, do the uh, water canning method where you, uh, or boiling canning I think they call it where you just stick the jars in a pot with some water about halfway up the jars and uh, and do that for 15 minutes and then you just take them out and let them cool off and then it can uh, it'll seal up perfectly but it also uh, kind of sterilizes everything so the high acidity type things like this you don't need to do the pressure canning in fact you'll turn your pickles to mush if you do that so anyways, uh, we're about ready to get another dozen done, and uh, that kind of knocks my my cucumbers down. Of course, I didn't pick any the last two days, so I probably have quite a few i got to pick out there. But um, that's uh, these are probably going to be my giveaways to people. All right, so I wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of an art that you got to figure out when you're doing this and get the recipe the way you like it. But, uh, man, i got a lot of cucumbers, and this is a great uh, addition to any meal especially lunches so make your own cucumbers oh i gotta tell you one more thing i'm so proud of myself so certain times a year and i'm not sure why this time of year is that but they consider uh, mason jars like a seasonal item and the doggone things went on sale at kroger and last year i had bought everything out of tractor supply at a certain time of year and i thought it was later in the year but uh, they had these uh, uh mason jars for eight dollars for um, a case so you're like uh, uh, I forget what that is so 80 into 12 might be like 60 cents a piece or something you're you're lucky to get them for a dollar a piece typically so that's a fantastic price and uh, so I picked up you know eight cases and you know with the garden we're going through right now we uh, we're using them so I probably I probably just in the last couple days I've got uh, uh, two and two and a quarter cases done. So I've got green beans, six of them. I got a case of pickles that I did, and then this is chicken soup. So I'll probably have some more chicken soup done tomorrow. But I am still just canning away. I'm trying to, you know, preach people. You got to start doing this. You got to get ahead of the game. You know, especially before the price explosion and. Perhaps, you know, if Grand Solar Minimum really hits uh, this winter, it's going to really wake people up and then that's going to be a problem. When you need to get ahead of this. All right, hope that's helpful to you. Uh, we're, we're just continuing every day trying to improve. We're just not getting the rain like they had projected this week, so I'm out here watering. I've got uh, two sprinklers set up, and I did the other one for two hours, and I'm doing this one for two hours. I've got more onions I gotta pick there, so I'm about ready to pull them out, but I'm gonna yeah, probably wait till they dry out a little bit and uh, trying to give my new tomato plants a good shot here. I'm gonna spray the uh, 
those couple beds that I had problems with the tomatoes with some copper solution that I've got. See if I can uh, knock down this wilt that's happening. But it just may be I'm not watering enough. That's what we're going to find out here. We're going to give this a really nice soaking here. And uh, we'll go from there. i got to do my side yard too. My All my uh, blueberries and all my green beans and okra. I want to show you these things are starting to take off. I got a couple okra I got to pick on here. But I wanted you to see the flowers on these things. Isn't that beautiful? When these plants get uh, really large and you just see these things in full bloom, it's super impressive. Super impressive. Yeah, these things need some water. My back beds are kind of overgrown with weeds. I got to go pull all that out. That only takes a little bit of time, but uh, it's just uh, it's not enough hours in the day. My uh, mint and stuff have gone bolted to bloom, so I need to cut them back. I got some uh, asparagus I need to pull out too, I noticed the other day. They're super spindly, so I need to get some water on these guys. I got some grass growing in here. Well, I just got the grill ready. Got coals all warmed up. I always just used a little chimney thing with a couple pages of newspaper underneath it and uh, I don't use any lighter fluid or anything else and uh, this sucker is ready for something to put on top. What are we cooking? We are cooking some boneless ribeyes. Oh baby, that's some nice looking ribeyes. They're both about, they're all about a pound a piece. I just cut off a big slab. This was... Uh, Every once in a while you can get these deals where they're not uh, pre-cut, and so you just buy a whole slab, it's a lot cheaper that way. In fact, I'm always looking for, like at Publix a lot of times, they have on Father's Day, the uh, rib roasts. And those are ribeyes, just got the bone on there, so just cut them. And uh, I usually take the bones and I cook them up on the grill and I eat them just like... Uh, I don't know, medieval times. It's the best thing in the world, especially if you can get those tomahawk ones where there's big old massive bones. Those are awesome. Anyways, let's get these things cooking. All right, we're about halfway there. These things are looking amazing. I can't wait to eat some. We got some massive baked potatoes that we get from Sam's Club. My wife, uh, she coats them with olive oil and then rolls them in uh, sea salt and then uh, puts them in the oven. And then I think we got some corn on the cob we got from the store that was like super expensive, but it's corn on the cob. We like that. We might even, if I'm lucky, get some onions and mushrooms with some butter to put on the steaks. And I did want to tell you, uh, yesterday, we didn't really, you know, I, I usually cook on the weekend and then we eat all week, but I noticed we ran out of some chicken legs that I'd made, and so I was like, what the heck am I going to eat for lunch? So I went down into my basement and I pulled one of the jars of chili that I made back in October and this is homemade chili that I made from scratch and let me tell you something uh, even though it was probably nine months old it tasted like I had just cooked it that day it was amazing the only thing I had to do is I had to add a little bit of water because the beans soak up a lot of the moisture and uh, but I was I was super impressed that uh, it's the first time I had actually eaten something that was like my nine months old and it was fantastic so canning is something I highly recommend I'm actually gonna do uh, go down there a little bit later and I want to show you that I've used all my coke containers and got everything stacked now and it looks fantastic so that'll be next so a little uh foreshadowing there all right got to finish this up because i am hungry i haven't eaten lunch yet it's almost one o'clock this is when the boys are calm they're very spoiled doggies very spoiled Spoiled doggy. Spoiled rotten. Yeah. 
he ends up reaching up, says, keep going, keep going. Spoiled dog, upside down dog. You need your turn too, huh? <laughs> you guys are crazy. It's funny, sometimes they go from wild like the other day when I did the video to actually being somewhat sweet. Uh oh, here they go. You guys get out of here if you're going to start fighting. Too close. They're very gentle with each other, though. Every once in a while, you'll hear a yip, but it's unintentional. Stop around the neck. <laughs> Silly boys. Dougie says, come on, let's go. Let's go play. Let's play. Let's play. <laughs> okay. Are you guys going to be good and quiet now? I got to do some videos. I guess that's a no. Sometimes I have to put Dougie up in his kennel. <laughs> Dang, come attack me, why don't you?